Welcome to Si Plan Go, a podcast aimed at introducing people living a plant based lifestyle in Japan. For this episode, I interviewed Kiko Hirakawa, a Japanese ethical model based in Paris. Like most things in life, meeting Kiko was a coincidence born out of randomness coronavirus spreading in Europe, me going crazy in the city and wanting a breath of fresh air in the mountains, and a common friend who's into hiking. Long story short, After a hike with a couple of friends in nature, Kiko and I ended up recording this podcast in Yoyogi Park at a time when she was supposed to be in Paris and me on holiday out of the country. During our conversation, we talked about how she became a professional model, learning new languages and living abroad, why she chose Paris, her path to veganism, being a teenage vegan in Japan, her views about modeling and ethics, food and our emotional relationship to it, and more. Kiko is a beautiful human being, full of life and passion, and striving to make a better world. It was a real pleasure talking with her. I hope you will enjoy our conversation as much as I did. Without further ado, here is Kiko Hirakawa. Thank you, Kiko, for coming on Siplango. Thank you for having me. Sure. So, can you briefly or longly introduce yourself to our listeners? Yes, so my name is Kiko and I'm an ethical fashion model, so which means I mainly model for ethical and sustainable brands that are socially good and eco-friendly and fair. Um, so because I'm very passionate about uh, animal rights as well as human rights and uh, environment issues. Uh, so I want to support fashion that are good for the planet and lives of humans and animals. And I'm also an activist because I take action today. I mean, I organize, well, yeah, throughout organizing meetups in Paris uh, regularly and also uh, speaking up many issues on my social media. So I believe, yeah, I'm an activist to, to help people uh, make conscious and ethical choices on a daily basis. All right, thanks. Uh, so you jump directly into what you're doing, and, and we've heard that you said you did some things in Paris as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I live in you Paris. are living in yeah. Paris. Well, at the moment you're in Japan, yeah. but you're originally from Japan, and then you moved to Paris uh, quite a few years ago. Yeah. Uh, maybe before going there, can you tell us what got you into modeling in the first place? So I'm 22 and I got scouted um, on the street of Tokyo at the age of 12. And I, I mean, modeling, it came across my mind, but I didn't really think, you know, I was really into sports. So I was like a competitive swimmer and I was really into swimming. So I didn't really, didn't really think about modeling. But yeah, since I got scouted and the agency seemed to be nice, so I thought I could try and my parents also agreed but um, I didn't like work until I turned 16 because I need I put education and sports uh, a priority mm -hmm. and um, and after turning 16 I decided to study abroad in Canada because I really wanted to become an international model at the time because my height well I'm 181 centimeters so I'm very tall in Japan and my agent told me already at the time like I was 175 or something so my agent told me that maybe your height doesn't work for Japanese market so maybe it's better if you speak English and you can try like you know international market so I thought okay like I could you know maybe study abroad right now and so I studied very hard and I got one of the highest score in my high school and I got the opportunity to go to Canada to study English. And that's when and where I really like got involved in the international modeling industry. So yeah, that's how I started modeling, I guess. Yeah. All right. And uh, so you went to Canada and, and from there, how long did you stay over there? Uh, just one, one year. It was, okay. uh, yeah. How, what, I mean, I, some of our listeners might know that studying English in school in, in Japan is not making you fluent in the language and that's not only in Japan in a lot of countries you just study at school and you never speak actually the language how did it work for you with English uh, when you arrived in Canada how was your English how did it evolve were you like speaking English all the time or how did that go because your English is very good right now and um, I 
So I tried to speak English all the time, not Japanese, and I tried to, even with my Japanese friend, that we are trying to speak English all the time. And yeah, my, when I first arrived to Canada, my English wasn't great at all, and I didn't really understand. But like uh, I wrote down phrases that I had uh, most, and I asked my host family, like, you know, can you teach me some phrases so that I can write them down on my notebook and I can, before I went to bed, like I, I, I would always try to memorize those phrases and I kept doing this and it's actually the same for French. I speak some, you know, I mean, I speak yes. some French and I'm doing the same thing, exactly the same thing right now. Um, a bit slower than, you know, English because I think English is more useful, <laughs> but um, I love the language French, so yeah, I'm doing the same thing for French as well. Yeah. All right, well, that's great. Uh, so from my point of view, so I'm, I'm a language teacher at the moment, oh, okay, and yeah. um, I know, and I've also like, we speak the same languages actually, mm. right? So French, English, Japanese, yeah, although not true. in the same order. <laughs> um, it, it is challenging to take on a language and, and really try to become fluent in it you know when you live in the country it's easier but even when you live in that country sometimes you just no, feel a bit lazy yeah every day and so you tend to go back to some language you already know so it's great to to hear you actually challenge yourself that's uh that's uh, great to me like languages i don't my goal is never to get fluent actually in those languages mm -hmm. I, I just see languages as tools so mm -hmm. because it, in, when i'm living in paris i want to communicate with the people who live there and they don't really speak english so i just want to communicate with them and then so therefore french is a tool to communicate with them without this tool i can't communicate with them so that's why i want to learn the lang want to learn the language and also i like the language yeah so I don't know, I see languages, I think, differently from other people as well sometimes because, again, like, I'm, not, I'm not trying to get fluent in like languages and study, but I want to, yeah, of course, uh, learn as much as I can and so that I can communicate with people and I think I can really, truly get to know what uh, people are, who they are, truly, because sometimes, like, I feel like when I'm in Germany, uh, because I go to Berlin twice a year at least, and I feel like I don't speak German, you know, and I think they speak really good English, but then like I, f I always get the feeling that if they spoke German to me, maybe there are things that they would share with me or something, if that makes sense. Yeah, like I feel like um, something, you know, too. So I don't know, but um, yeah. Yeah, you're, you're right. <laughs> like language is not only. It, I mean, it's not the same talking one language. But I think you're a teacher, other. so I think it's different. Maybe, yeah. Well, <laughs> maybe so. Um, but it, it's definitely true that depending on what language you you're talking, you're speaking, uh, you're actually a bit in a different mindset. Yeah. And so, if someone talks to you in English or in in German, if German is their mother tongue, they will be in a bit in a different mindset. It can be very subtle, and maybe. It wouldn't change anything depending on the conversation you're having. But uh, yeah, so seeing languages are s tools to understand one another, I, I think it's the best approach to make the fastest progress. Um, and not to uh, get scared or afraid of making mistakes, of course, you know, course. because you learn from mistakes. And if you don't make mistakes, you can never learn actually uh, new vocabularies or, you know, and I think making mistakes makes you not to make mistakes in the future. So yeah, I, I think uh, sometimes getting embarrassed about <laughs> your mistakes is helpful actually to improve your languages that you're learning. Yeah, yeah true. So from Canada, uh, having somehow mastered English for communication purposes, yeah. you did you go back to Japan or did you yeah, go straight? Yeah, I did actually because to graduate from high school in Japan as well, but I there I felt very different because I missed a whole year and I felt yeah this was a bit of let's say like a weird period of time for me mm -hmm. <laughs> because I couldn't I couldn't feel like I was on the same page with uh, my l roommates you know but um, yeah I did graduate from high school and then like I started really like modeling yeah like traveling around the world really while working and stuff like that and I kept doing it until when I was 19 mm -hmm. so like about one year and then like I decided to go to to Paris yeah all right and um I think that's around that time that you started being vegan or veganish at least and I'd love to hear more about that but before talking about everything related to food 
Um, do you remember what kind of decided you f to go to Paris? I, we already know you love the language and, yeah. and probably some of the culture as well. Uh, why Paris and not any other big city in the world that would have been a, a great like place to to do what you wanted to do is it about veganism or not uh not especially okay. but you can relate it to veganism if so, it had a part in the decision so the making. reason why i went to paris was not related to veganism but um i i mean so i went to i decided to i guess yeah i mean i didn't have a visa so i i, could, I knew that i could only stay there for maximum two, three months mm -hmm. and my goal was to learn the language as much as I could, but also to empower young women, like especially models, to feel more comfortable and confident in their own skin because it's something that I dealt with in the modern industry and a lot of young women deal with. And I think it's so sad that m the most beautiful women, I mean, you know, in the society, seeing their as models are seen as like that in the society, yet they are so insecure. Mm -hmm. And like, why, why are they living like this? And why am I living? I, why was I living like that? You know, and I, I think that's like when I decided to go to France, I, I thought I, I would create modeling, uh, because I didn't like the industry at all. And I didn't like how I was living my life and I was sick of it. Yeah. And, um, and I chose Paris because um, I've been to London, I've been to, um, you know, New York, um, or like big other, you know, other big fashion cities, but not really Paris for, mm -hmm. for, you know, for modeling. So I thought I could go there and that's the capital of fashion, right? So I thought, okay, maybe I, if I went to Paris, maybe I could, you know, help these models feel more, you know, confident and comfortable in your skin or something. So that was like, you know, my kind of goal. Um, so I decided to organize meetups like by myself and to share my story, start off like I share, started sharing my story and, and which I think we can get into later on. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I think that was, those are my goals, yeah. All right. Um, and, and so you talked about having a hard time uh, a bit before going to Paris with being a model um, is your journey towards veganism related to that as well uh, so I yes I definitely is actually because I did so I dealt with um, like an eating disorder in Canada when I was 17 mm -hmm. and because I got signed to um, ethical mod no, sorry, not ethical model it's an ethic ah why do I say keep so it, I got signed to, um, you know, international uh, model agency in mm -hmm. Canada. And then um, everything was fine. And, you know, I was, I got some work sometimes. And, but then like they, one, one time they asked me to come to the agency and like they measured me, you know, in front of everyone or mm -hmm. in the office. And then they said that, you know, Kiko, you're doing great. Everything is okay. But just, you know, maybe just like 10 pounds or like, you know, five pounds. I don't know, maybe she said five pounds in one week or something. Can you lose that? You know, I think you'd look like a perfect uh, lover model if you do so. And and that moment, you know, I, I was, you know, at the time I just turned 17 and yeah. I'm like, here, there are like many adults like telling me to lose weight and mm -hmm. also perhaps like change my teeth, uh, fix my teeth and mm -hmm. also nose. Uh, and um, I mean, yeah, especially weight. I knew that I, I had in control. Of, you know, I had. Um, I can't control my weight, right? I think. I mean, if you don't eat, you lose weight. And uh, and then also, I used to be a competitive swimmer, so I knew I had stamina. Like I'm so competitive. Like you know, uh, whenever, whenever I do sports or whenever I go to gym. So I decided. You know, after the appointment, I told myself that I'm gonna go on an extreme diet, you know, where I eat maybe a salad and like an apple a day, and then like uh, go to gym, uh, uh, maybe spend at least three hours on, on yeah, on cardio or swimming or something. Mm -hmm. And then like, um, how much can I share? But um, so, <laughs> yeah, so basically, um, yeah, so, 
I, yeah, basically to, to share my story a bit. So I lost like an insane amount of weight with, in a short period of time and I got hospitalized. I got to the point where I got hospitalized and I was told that uh, my heart rate was so late that I could die anytime soon. Mm -hmm. And I was so thin. I thought I was still fat. And it's just so crazy. Like I didn't see myself um, thin enough still. Mm. And I was uh, at the time like I, I waited only. Are you familiar with kilo or pounds? Uh, whatever okay. works for you. So like 43 kilo or something. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm 181 centimeters. So yeah. you can see how ill I was or you know and um, so basically like how I got to you know veganism basically I wanted to gain weight back you know later on of course like my doc doctor told me that I need to gain weight and I need to get healthy again otherwise mm -hmm. you will just die you know and of course it was hard for me to eat again after restricting so much and um, but then like and I and I started eating, but I didn't know like anything about veganism at the time. But then I saw like in a supermarket um, in Canada, like some vegan sausages or something. Okay. And I was like, what? Are, why like do they exist? You know, even like I didn't understand. You know, and I was just curious about the meaning behind those sausages, <laughs> something. And so I decided to like I went I went back home and like I decided to. Yeah, I did started doing my own research mm -hmm. about like plant-based uh, products or something. And I saw like some footage of animals being killed or mm. like, you know, in slaughterhouses. And I was like, I knew that somehow I knew that this was happening in the world, but I couldn't really, I didn't have a connection, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, basically I started watching more and more about documentaries. And I, and then, you know, at the time I was looking for, I guess, like a, new lifestyle to make me feel good and you know also help me gain weight and stuff like that and I and I um, and I heard that if you eat like e enough fat and you know uh, and um, what is it um, yeah I, you can be completely healthy uh, on a vegan diet and I thought uh, well, I was not vegan at the time, no. I was more like a pesticarian. Like, I was trying mm -hmm. to cut down, you know, my meat consumption, but not, like, completely vegan. But I was really, like, I become more more curious and curious. And then, like, when I came back to Japan, I was, like, my parents disagreed with, you know, this lifestyle. So I kept eating fish and trying to gain weight. And I did I was gaining weight, you know, get eaten by my weight back. Um, and then like, um, maybe one year later, I like fully decided to, to go vegan. I think it was a long journey, mm -hmm. you know, it's not like overnight thing. Okay. Definitely not. Like maybe it took me one year and a half to, yeah, because I feel like I had to gain some weight to mm -hmm. fully go vegan. And um, maybe I I'm see, wrong, yeah. but like, I felt like I needed to have healthy relations. I wanted to make sure that I'm not avoiding these for example, animal products to, because they, I thought, you know, my eating disorder mind, I would say, you know, thought they would make me fat or something. No, I didn't mm. want to be like that, you know. So I could eat them, but then like, I choose not to eat them because they are not ethical. That yeah. makes sense. I see. And I, because, you know, actually funny because, um, it's funny enough because I was um, more scared of eating carbohydrates at the time, you okay. know. So I could eat fish, I could eat meat, but I couldn't eat, uh, uh, rice. Okay. I was so afraid of carbohydrates. So veganism actually, or vegan lifestyle, definitely helped me uh, uh, helped me overcome the fear of eating carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Cause yeah. Carbs are good for you. And I believe yeah. so, yes. Yeah. Um, so you, t you just told us it took you about a year and a half to go from when you discovered non-animal products like vegan sausages, etc. Uh, to decide to be fully vegan during that time or even maybe before well, you told us that you didn't know what those products were for in the first place yeah. did you not have around you uh, any vegetarians or kind of somehow plant-based people like in Canada or and and how about during your your transition to veganism the, were there people around you who could share with you some of your questions etc 
Uh, no, <laughs> I think because I was in high school in Canada and mm -hmm. people were eating meat all the time and even like when I was with my because I was living with my first family, you know, in Canada and they are a huge, huge meat eaters and they would eat pizza with pepperoni okay. and or, or like maybe steak every day. Mm -hmm. So it's like very, you know, yeah, pretty much meat based diet and um and when I went back to, yeah, when I came back to Japan, it was more like fish, you know. Yeah, but and so around you, you didn't meet anyone that would... No, really. So yeah. I decided to go, I decided to kind of, because I find, um, I found um, B Tokyo Biga Meetup. Yes. And I thought this would be great because I could finally meet someone that, I mean, some people who are, who share at least the same vision mm -hmm. and, you know, maybe vegan, yeah, so... All right. So you actually was that still before you went to Paris, the Tokyo Vegan yeah, Meetup? Course, you found yeah. them before? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. That's so. So you did you join any meetup before? Yes, going? many times. Yeah. All right. I was like a regular subscriber. <laughs> I would come back. Yeah, come all the time, like picnics or everything. Yeah. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah. Obviously, at the time, I wasn't uh, taking part at all, although oh, okay. I was in Japan. Um, yeah, because so our mutual friend Rob. Uh, yeah, introduced yeah, yeah. us I and met uh, him at then. the time yeah at the okay time. yeah so because i asked him how did you guys met yeah. and uh, meet and um uh he told me vi took a vegan meetup but i for some reason in my mind it was it, it was something more recent than like way before mm. uh last year or whatever mm. so all right uh that's that's great that you found yeah, the group i was then. 18 and yeah i would go there by myself uh after school or something and i was just I'll tell everyone that like I feel so alone in high school, you know, because nobody would really understand what veganism is about or you know plant-based e eating, mm. um, because I I talk about it a lot in school, <laughs> like, but meat is not great and it's not ethical, blah blah blah, and, like nobody believe me really, and yeah, but then like uh, my friends still wanted to go to cafes with me and stuff, so that was nice, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, Japanese people will, from my experience, they will not really try or understand you. I don't know if they're trying or not, but they will not. There's no one that's going to go, oh, you're right, and, and, and actually look into that kind of thing themselves. But they will definitely not judge you and push you away. And so as long as you're yourself yeah. not pushing people away, you can still yeah, 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 enjoy social times yeah. with people. So it's a bit of a bittersweet yeah, yeah, <laughs> thing because you're happy about it, but you're also <laughs> frustrated about it. It's like not um, expressive, if that makes sense. I yes. don't know, like yeah. they somehow agree with you, but not like yeah, really they're, agree with you. Yeah, they're trying to <laughs> not to not make any you know waves and yeah. not to disturb the, the, the harmony there of the relationship. So it's a very Japanese thing. For sure. Um, so you ch chose to go to Paris also related to veganism, I guess. Like, was it already kind of vegan friendly at the time when you arrived there? Uh, so I've been, before I went to Paris for three months, I visited there twice before because I was, mm -hmm. I had, well, I had some castings for modeling and I visited there twice. And I, at the time, I would go to, a shop called Amo the Vegan, so it's like vegan world, you know, and I would always get stuff from there. And but that was the only shop I knew that was completely, uh, fully vegan. But then like, yeah, when I went back to Paris for three months to learn language and yeah, to pursue my passion, um, I could find more and more uh, vegan cafes there. And I, th I felt like, okay, it's getting there, you know. Uh, but I feel like, so I've been living there for like almost three years now. And again, like it's growing more and more. So compared to three years ago, yeah, it's huge now, I think. Sure. Um, and just tell us, because I'm curious and I'm sure listeners are curious as well. How did you manage to go from your three months as a tourist to staying there uh, working, I, I suppose, right? How did that kind of adventure unfold so it's a bit complicated but i so i actually i did it again on three months uh you know be much tourist visa yeah 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 I so came you went back, out of the country yeah, and, you and came i back, went yeah. back to learn a bit more language again 
And then I came back and I decided to finally,、um, you know, apply for a talent visa. Like, okay.、Uh, my I see. Talent, what is it? Artist visa. Yeah,、mm -hmm. passport talent. So、um, I have that now. And yeah, basically, I can stay there like long term.、Um, All right. Yeah,、um, I'm still waiting for my, like I told you about <laughs> cat, Vital. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so like a、uh, health yeah. insurance yeah, it's, uh, it's, card. I have、yeah. the, you know, piece of paper from provided by the government, but I don't have the actual card, so I need it so much. Yeah, well, but, right now I、yeah. suppose there's a lot of yeah,、uh, well, delays yeah, in, in of all、course. parts of the administrations and, yeah, and, and businesses, of,、uh, right? Because of、yeah. the whole worldwide situation that's very,、um, let's say, Serious、uh, in in Europe for、yeah. sure,、uh, and、uh, can you tell us what what was your main focus, your main line of work、uh, being in in Paris? Is there something like because I'm not knowledgeable about the fashion industry and the modeling industry,、uh, and maybe most of our probably most of our listeners aren't don't know much about it either. So, is there something that you can share with us that would be, you think, interesting to to learn about?、Uh, modern industry. Yeah, like what you did and and were doing in Paris until recently, and and what、oh, yes, what's、sure. been working the、yeah. the best for you yeah, yeah, and、yeah. etc. So I, in my head, I quit normal modeling. That makes sense. Typical modeling, working for high fashion brands and fast fashion brands, because I feel like models should be、um, considered as brands supply chain, in my opinion, because they can be today. They are not just object. And I mean, I want first of all, I want brands and agents, you know, model agent, to realize that models are not. Object anymore?、Uh, they are humans. They have feelings. They have emotions. You know,、mm -hmm. because they treat you as if they are object.、Mm -hmm. And so, and also today, social media is a thing, and we all have voice、um, to to speak up for truth or for change. And I think、uh, what I'm doing today is、um, eth well, ethical modeling. I model for brands that I feel. Connected with and、mm -hmm. you know,、um, good for the for the planet and lives of humans and animals, lives of humans and animals, and、um, so like I feel like in Europe there's a lot of、um, ethical brands, and and、um, I yeah I model for them and sometimes、uh, I do collaborations for over social media. And I give talks at events,、uh, sharing my my work because not many models do it now.、Uh, I feel like I'm the only one、um, in Paris or in in Europe. Really, I see some eco-friendly models, but I not just eco-friend eco eco model. I care about again lives like human rights and animal rights as well. So yeah, I、uh, that's what I, what's Yeah, that's what I'm doing, and I'm so grateful to have、uh, people who understand my work around me, and like my agents, and yeah, they do respect, like my. I mean, they they really、uh, understand who I am and where I come from and all that stuff. Yeah. All right. Yeah, because I imagine that being having preferences based on on. Your values for whom you're gonna work with and whom you're not gonna work with is definitely a, a limiting factor in、um, how much work you can get, right? Yeah. Is it sometimes yeah, that, challenging? Yeah, definitely challenging. One hundred percent. Yeah, super challenging actually.、Uh, you just need to be active all the time. So I go. To, I'm not just waiting like other models.、Uh, I go to events literally on my own. So I go to Germany because Berlin, like I said, twice a year.、Mm -hmm. It's because there are huge, huge ethical events twice a year. It's called、yeah. Neuit, and I go there on my own as an ethical fashion model, and I market myself. I promote myself. You know, I talk to. The brands, like brand owners, and I want to kind of see、um, if I feel like I share same vision or you know ethical 
kind of preferences. Mm -hmm. And then if I feel like it and I just propose, it, by the way, are you guys ever looking for like models or, you know, someone to promote your brand? And because I'm a um, model or influencer and I can help you out or something like that. And then they, yeah, that's, uh, and then if I, if they say yes, and I talk to my agent and they can, you know, talk about, uh, uh, how Get, getting they, you work, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I'm act like, um, yeah, I emailed them. Um, well, I email my agent and they can email them. And I mm -hmm. just always, I'm like looking for new brands and always, you know, I always try to go to events. Not only in Berlin, of course, not like in, in Paris and many other European cities. Yeah. Even when I go on a trip, like, you know, um, like I, I went to Brussels, like, uh, for Christmas, mm -hmm. I was, I was there, I guess, for vacation, but I was more looking for ethical brands I because see. I was, I was, I'm always curious about discovering, um, ethical brands. Yeah. All right. Um, and so you've been doing that for about maybe two, three years? Yeah, two years, I would say. Yeah, less than two years, I think. Yeah. All right. And uh, do you have any other uh, projects that you started or are like starting or continuing right now or started and kind of put on hold? And, and how, those, how do those projects kind of fit within the, the vision you have for yourself and, and where you want to go forward? Yes, I have one project that I secretly started. <laughs> um, so I'm trying to create an ethical model agency because this doesn't exist yet in, in Paris or, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, the agency that I think of ethical doesn't exist yet in the, in the world and globally. So I'm trying to create a platform where uh, clients can, or ethical brands, clients can book um, models based on their ethical preferences. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the, you are not, as a model, you are not judged based on what you look like, but the more about what you're passionate about mm -hmm. in, in your life. And maybe, yeah, those things are ethics, like related to ethics and sustainability. Uh, it's an agency that focuses on ethics and sustainability um, in the first place. So, um, I, um, yeah, I'm asking my friends who support, for example, I mean, who stand for, like, Look, climate change or animal rights, human rights, uh, human empowerment, um, and really anything, you know, uh, they feel uh, most passionate about, <laughs> you know, the, yeah, I'm asking my friends who are taking action and uh, to, to join the platform and have some experience in modeling, of course, yeah. And, um, and I, yeah, like luckily I have many connections with uh, ethical brands already because I got the events, mm -hmm. like like ethical events or sustainable events all, all the time so that's the platform that i'm that i'm creating an agency that i'm creating yes uh, right now okay um i think i've seen on on your uh, profile on on facebook that you also had some things going on related to nutrition is that oh, still yes. ongoing yeah. projects or have you left well, that yeah. kind of on a hold o for now always i can I can work as a health coach. Uh, I have a certification in holistic, holistic nutrition and as, as well as, well as plant-based nutrition uh, because to, I think I wanted to study plant-based nutrition to just make sure in a way mm -hmm. that like information that I was consuming were not just coming from internet or, you know, mm -hmm. I wanted to just, yeah, get diploma or some, like certification like, you know, in this field. So I, um, I, I work as a health coach, um, but I think because of modeling work, um, you know, I, I'm more busy in this field today. So um, I'm always happy to help people, you know, live happier and healthier. And because holistic, nutri like, I mean, holistic um, health coaching is about not only about nutrition, but also well-being. So I want to... Um, yeah, I will ha offer like a six month uh, health coaching program and yeah, I, um, I can uh, help clients, you know, become healthier and happier. <laughs> yeah. So I have the website called uh, Sunflower Soul and um, yeah, I had uh, some clients uh, in Paris as well in the past. Um, but again, like my modeling work is getting Busier. Busier. Yeah. And also um, my new project, I'm focusing on that right now more. 
But again, like, I don't know if I'm allowed to share, I mean, mention this, but like, go ahead. Corona, coronavirus situation. Yeah, yeah sure, yeah. go ahead. You can uh, talk I about it. I feel that coronavirus can really um, make us feel anxious, you know, of course, and stressed in a way. And I think this is something that uh, we all deal with, regardless of where you are, uh, because we just don't know what might happen within, like, I mean, in one month or you know, month really. So mm -hmm. I feel like as a health coach, certified health coach, I feel kind of obligated to, or like I feel called to, to help people feel less anxious and, you know, less stressed. So I shared some tips on my, like, especially uh, I'm, I'm very active on my Instagram. So I just, I shared some tips yesterday All um, right. about coronavirus, um, anxiety and, um, yeah, stress. And All right. Like I actually haven't had a look at your Instagram yet. Uh, my yeah. bad. Um, could you just share those tips now since you, you just uh, brought those up? Oh, sorry. You have to look them up on your phone. Um, yeah, I shared like eight tips yesterday oh, um, about, let's listen to this. Um, you know, coronavirus <laughs> anxiety and well, t eight tips for coronavirus anxiety and stress. And yeah, like one, like stay informed, but not consuming too much info mm -hmm. like i you know we kind of we just, when we met today you shared that you don't consume a lot of information well i am actually looking to, at yeah. yeah well i'm i i'm not gonna s spend any time um talking about my position about the whole thing mm -hmm. but uh, i for personal reasons i do want to keep informed a bit maybe more than most people yeah uh but i realize that at the same time it, it is kind of a waste of my time and also yeah, of energy so yeah. you have to be careful with how you you approach the news that's for sure yeah and i think like look at resources that you're getting your information from because if you are just getting your information from like humors or something on twitter for example mm -hmm. that's not great of course so it's always good to look at like trusting trustworthy um info, uh, resources mm -hmm. maybe uh, such as uh, your local authority authorities yeah. and also uh, WHO and mm -hmm. stuff like that sure. and number two is um, to stay connected with your friends and your your loved ones because yeah you, you know social distance so social distance is a thing and social iso isolation is a thing but you can still you know I guess um, stay connected with your loved one I think mm -hmm. it's very important because humans are naturally uh, social what is it like social animals. yeah social animals <laughs> so i think it. we crave yeah. for those things so exactly, of course yeah. it's natural but yeah so you can stay connected because thanks to technology today you know we can stay connected so that's the second tip and third thing is focus on the things you can control because you know you can't control what's happening in the world right and but you can control what you can do today to make yourself feel better or you know to make to just yeah, like focus on the project or something like that. So yeah, it's something you are in control of. And for like exercise, or I would say like find ways to move your body, uh, because if you don't move your body and just sitting all day long, of course you don't, you won't feel. I mean, I don't think you feel the greatest. No. So I just dance and you know like with loud music. I mean, if you have this environment, this it, it's great. But if you don't, you you can just kind of use your headphone or something. And, you know, try to dance or whatever. Like. Maybe yoga, um, I mean, yoga is actually another tip, but like, you know, I think just find a way to move your body, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and fi fifth, uh, journal, uh, well, journaling for me really helps. Uh, I think just writing down what's in my mind, uh, letting them out uh, really helps. Uh, sixth, deep breathing. I have some tips to, to do this, but um, yeah, um, you know, taking a deep breath, uh, it's always important and seven yoga well this is something that really works for me and I, i'm sure for other people as well and yeah this could be a way for you to move your body as well i believe and finally uh eighth like to well help others yeah in need because if you are if your neighbors you know um because i know in paris like you know the situation is not really great and um if you are living with, I mean, if your neighbors need help and they are um, seniors, you know, um, but they can't go to, so they can't go to grocery 
um, stores or something and maybe you can help them and yeah I think to help each other today is very important especially uh, during these uncertain times yeah, yeah sure well it sounds like very good advice and I mean I, I, I should have said that beforehand uh, I'm actually releasing one podcast a month mm -mm. and the, the one for April is actually Nadia Sure. Yeah, I already yeah, recorded amazing. it. So we actually, I'm actually planning on releasing this one early May. I really hope this is going to sound like we're talking about something of the past and yeah. there's not going to be anything anymore going yeah. on with this whole virus thing. Um, but even if it's past listeners, past us, uh, when I release this, those advices are yeah. very good advices to, to just anything, uh, how to approach your life so that you have more quality you know um it's not even, just for coronavirus yeah. anxiety but just just anxiety in general yeah because be the, the yeah. news the news their business is to unfortunately so they it's to kind panic. of make people <laughs> afraid of things and i mean it's not like they want that consciously all of them they want to inform but usually you inform people about what's not uh, great and the news definitely doesn't have business trying to make you happier every day so it's up to you to kind of it's a bit like food right like people who make food for a business and try to sell it to you like if they're making healthy food that's good but if they're making not so healthy food like fast food it's still good to have it but it's up to you the consumer to choose so definitely those advices about coronavirus can be applied every day of your life like regardless of the situation mm. yeah that's true that's a great way to i mean interesting way to see the situation i think it's like food yeah well to some extent right uh but because like in speaking of food um i'd love to hear about how so you you said that you had uh, you were certified in um, nutrition and plant-based nutrition. Um, how were you eating before learning all that? And how are you eating now? Ooh. Are you cooking yourself? Oh, yeah. Before, no. I was... Um, so before learning, studying nutrition, I think I was... I wasn't really educated on how to get your, how to get fat and also protein uh, on a plant-based diet, mm -hmm. I would say. I think I knew, but like I was not really, I didn't, there, there are times I would skip on those things, you know, because I was just lazy and stuff like mm -hmm. that. But like now that I know, like, no, I don't. You know, I just make sure that like I get everything mm -hmm. from yeah each micronutrient. All right. Yeah. So can you do you remember something you would have often before knowing enough about the balance of mic macronutrients like fat, protein, and carbs? What kind of foods would you go by? Because people who start to be plant based they usually have a hard time. Um, replacing everything they used to eat with alternatives that kind of served the, ser the same purpose and and what was your your way to go do you remember Be before you be because you said you wouldn't have every day a really balanced uh set of nutrients yeah so carbs proteins and 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 fats right yeah. uh for the macronutrients what kind of foods before you knew how to really kind of see what was in each yeah food you were eating what kind of food would you eat well like would uh, you okay. make yourself uh food just every day carbohydrate, to be honest yeah oh, i really? just like eating like i don't know like <laughs> there that was a kind of like a strange period of time because i think there are many like you, vegan youtubers i don't know if you know them but like really the banana girl or I don't know that there are so many vegan YouTubers mm -hmm. as, as well and influencers and stuff like that and what they are eating um, I believed um, in what they were eating um, which was really like carbohydrate um, like starch mm -hmm. stuff so basically potatoes and yep. bananas um, dates and uh, rice 
And if you eat that stuff, you will be completely healthy and stuff like that. But you are, you know, missing out like many、uh, proteins and、um, fat. Yeah,、mm-hmm. it seems to, it seems to, like,、uh, it seems to be like they are afraid of eating fats. And、yeah. I think I, I kind of became without knowing. I, I would say I was kind of afraid of eating too much fat or something.、Mm-hmm. And after learning nutrition, I kind of. Yeah, I, I, was, I decided to eat more nuts and seeds and you know,、um, put, use some oil yeah, for my food because before I was like kind of, I, I thought I would never need any olive oil. Or,、mm-hmm. you know. I see. Yeah, I mean, I don't love it. That's the thing. I don't love olive oil, the taste、exactly. of it. Yeah. But、um, I don't mind it. That makes sense. That's a huge difference. Like, you, know, you don't、mm-hmm. mind it or you, you just don't want yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Yeah. Uh, so, I was actually just going to ask you what did you add to your diet to have those、uh, fats and, 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 and proteins、uh, in, in your daily diet? So, I guess for fats like nuts and seeds and, and some amount of protein as well, and definitely yeah, oil. Avocado and, and, yeah, avocado you know, and And、uh, what would you eat on a kind of weekly basis、uh, yeah. to make sure you have protein every day, enough of it? Yeah, I think like most, a lot of people, like when they go on like, go on a vegan diet or go vegan, like I feel like they worry a lot about proteins and you know,、mm-hmm. because I think True. We, are, we live in a society where we are told to eat meat for our, you know, protein、um, resources. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think、um, we, are, we are told to think that way, but I think, you know, broccoli s have a lot of protein as well and also like,、um, You know, beans and、mm. um, yeah, there are alternatives today, such as like seitan, tempeh, and、uh, soy meat.、Um, I love those stuff. I don't, yeah, I really don't mind because I know some vegans don't like those stuff as、mm-hmm. well, but、True. I really don't mind. I just, I'm grateful actually to have the options and、uh, enjoy the food. Like, and like, you know, they are very resemble. To what I used to eat when I was young, or、okay. something, for example.、Right. Uh, so, I, I wanted to ask you we've been talking about some of the foods vegan have and you have, and, and most of the foods we talked about are whole foods, right?、Yeah. Are you yourself mostly focused on whole foods, or、mm-hmm. do you not really pay in te- any attention、no. and, and kind of eat a bit of everything? Actually, I don't, because I just feel like food is、um, food can prey. How to say it? It's like there are food that nourishes our body,、uh, but also our thaw, soul. I mean, okay, or,、yeah, so、I think okay, it's I like it. it's so important to eat what you feel like you want to, you know, you、mm-hmm. feel like you, you need, and just listen to your body is what it needs and what it, cla- what it craves, you know. And I think it's very important to, to listen that, to, to those voices, you know. And、um, I think.、Um, Because I ignore,、um, ignore those things in the past, and I felt like I was, I mean, I was eating like healthy, clean, eat,、um, what is it, clean, clean food or something, but I don't think it made me truly happy, if that makes、okay. sense. So, like, I always had a feeling after I ate the food, and I, but I still crave. Like, but I'm still craving something. That makes sense. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I understand. I never really felt like satisfied. That's the thing.、Mm, yeah.、Mm. So, like, eat food that nourishes your body, but also soul sometimes, you know.、Mm-hmm. That could mean, like, ice cream or, I don't know, like, really anything. Like, yeah, chocolate, whatever.、Uh, but I naturally don't really like too sweet、um, stuff. So,、mm-hmm. like, I don't. I don't, never crave icing or something, if that makes sense. All right. Cupcakes and. I see. Yeah. But I do like, yeah, chocolate and cup. Okay, not cupcakes, but like <laughs> <laughs> cookies and stuff like、All、that.、Right. Yeah, why not? Yeah, I see. Yeah.、Um, so, yeah, I think it's very important to eat things that overall make you satisfied with what you eat. Yeah. I, I believe, though, that. Howdy. <laughs> <laughs> We have an extra guest on the podcast. <laughs> I don't think he's plant based, but he's probably not speaking English either. <laughs> 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 
All right, let's continue. So oh, I was not, saying, yeah. it's definitely important to eat food that leave you overall satisfied of what you've been eating and not only satisfied with the idea that you've eaten like clean, clean foods uh, with a lot of quotes around clean or uh, less calories that you you need for a day so that you can lose weight. You know, it's it, there's a lot of psychology and emotional uh, well-being involved with food. So I think it, it, it that's why a lot of people have a hard time switching diets uh, drastically uh, overnight and it's better to go slow and get used to what you eat and enjoy what you eat and, and have variety if that's important yeah, for you. Yeah. Right? Um, some people like me are, are weird and I'm actually able to eat the same thing every day and be happy about it for the most part. Um, but I also realized that if it was as easy to make more varied food than what I do every day for my daily food, I would probably do that. So I would be happier with more variety. It's just a matter of, let's say, I like to be efficient, so mm -hmm. I don't do too many different kind of recipes. Like the other day, uh, you saw something that I was eating. That's something I do almost every day, you know? So it's really like the mm -hmm. same kind of foods, but I'm very... Um, careful about the nutrients that yeah, I, no, I have. Of course, those are the food that I like most, actually. Okay. Yeah, I, I do definitely stick to whole new, whole, uh, whole foods, but like uh, that doesn't mean I I always I try to avoid um, cookies once oh, a while no, or anything. No. Yeah. I, I don't either. And uh, when I think I, because maybe something to do in the past, uh, I mean, with my past, you know, because I have an eating disorder, so I try not to have this uh, kind of authentic, like, uh, sorry, what's the word, like, uh, um, I mean, sorry, um, I think um, I try not to have this, like, you know, a mindset where I, like, tell myself, like, I need to eat clean, clean, you know, I, I, I just allow myself to eat whatever I want, but then, yeah, of course, with the, with the knowledge on nutrition, I mean, holistic nutrition, sorry, uh, Whole, whole foods, plant-based nutrition. I um, I try to, of course, you know, um, uh, stick to my whole food diet as much as I can. All yeah. right, yeah, that makes total sense. I mean, you you know yourself the best, and yeah, I think so people should just know what works best for them, and mm. you know, um, if that means like they want to eat ice cream for for breakfast <laughs> I, like you know once a week they can do it oh so it's still only once a week i hear you <laughs> yeah. i hear you so don't do it twice a week folks no. because that's not good um sure i mean indulging in things you know not to be the healthiest choice is is important and uh it, it's really Im important as well to not take yourself too seriously yeah uh, and not take the food you eat too seriously as long as it doesn't impact anyone else obviously because then uh it's a whole different story right um but yeah okay uh and um how are you doing since you came back to japan so i think you came back six days ago something like that no over a week no okay uh, yeah actually last tuesday so over a week yeah okay i see uh how are you doing with food here because there's quite a few things that you can't find easily in the supermarkets etc and and i think you're actually staying with your parents right now yeah it's hard it, it is hard like i feel like it's definitely harder than yeah, of course, but like finding vegan foods in, in Europe uh, because there are just many alternatives in a, even in a normal, you know, typical supermarket. Um, yeah, there are many options um, in Europe now. But I also try, to, because I care about the environment as well, I live a very low waste lifestyle in, mm -hmm. in Paris. So I, when, I, when I go... Um, you know, go get some my grains and stuff like that. I always bring my own jar and mm -hmm. I just get just lice in my own jar and I just, you know, um, just pay um, 
for my grains. Not like I'm not paying for packaging. If okay. that makes sense. Yeah, There's a low yeah. zero waste store close to my place. That's great. And this doesn't exist in Japan. So actually, finding vegan food or making dinner or making food, you know, for like a big vegan dinner f- or vegan food, sorry, um, for my family or for myself, it's not hard because I know how to do it. I know how to cook. But like what <laughs> what I don't like is like the amount of plastic I'm using, the amount of waste I'm creating, it just makes me feel, yeah, not great. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Yeah, I just, I and then portions are so small. So I feel like if... I don't know. I feel like I'm creating more and more waste. If that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I hear you. I, I'm struggling myself. Uh, I almost buy all my produce without plastic, but that limits the amount of and the kind of produce I can buy. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so because I can do this because I know yeah. I'm not gonna yeah stay forever here in Japan, and 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 that works for me for the time being. But yeah, it's not it's not ideal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think it's impossible to get uh, food um, without any waste, without having any waste. That makes sense. In like, Japan, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, it's in really Nagu- difficult. From store, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's very hard. I uh, saw many uh, individual fruits in a mm-hmm. wrapped in a plastic bag, in single plastic, yeah, bag, and I think it it just breaks my heart. Like to yeah, see it, that. it's really like a one cucumber in a plastic bag, or you know, one. <laughs> I don't know, aubergine in a plastic bag or something. It's just, wow, like, why do we need to do this? Or one lemon, or, you know. Yeah, it, it is quite, it can get <laughs> I quite I had to take crazy. a photo of every product. <laughs> like sure. Like that, yeah, actually. Sure, yeah. That, that's definitely I a challenge I need to share it on my here. social media because I think, you know, my friends in Europe don't know uh, this program really, hmm. so. I actually have a friend here in, in Japan. I haven't seen her or talked to her in a while, but she's vegan and... Uh, well traveled as well, and I believe she went a hundred percent or close to a hundred percent wasteless, yeah. zero waste here living in Tokyo. Oh, yeah? uh, and then she's actually working for an, uh, 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 don't quote me on this, but an organization related to uh, the climate marches and, and like everything related to the environment. So is she vegan? M- yeah, she's vegan. Yeah, that's crazy. Wow. Uh, yeah, so she might have it. tips uh, for for listeners for that are in Japan for yourself when you're in Japan. Maybe she she knows places that are more um, let's say eco friendly yeah. when you buy stuff. But uh, if you have to take the train one hour and then come back one hour, it's still not really a solution. I think right. So I think patience and Raising awareness yeah. in one way or the other is is definitely important. I agree. So let's leave food on the side for a little while, and I'd love to go back to it very briefly later on. But first, uh, do you have advices or to dos and to avoids kind of list of of things related to what you did in life so far? So modeling, living abroad. Uh, all those things. Yes, so um, modeling, uh, speaking of modeling, I think if you want to become a model and especially, well, I just see the modeling future uh, should be more ethical. So because I think just using young women or men for, I mean, I want, I want modeling industry to be more just more meaningful and more ethical and that's kind of my fault but if you really want to become a model now and I first I really want you to know yourself uh, because there are gonna be many many people regardless of whether you want to work in ethical fashion or sustainable fashion you know you they're gonna be always people telling you like who you are and you'll maybe ask you like what to be and stuff like that or what to look like and what kind of clothes you need to wear or blah 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 and like you need to be able to kind of you know, ignore them in a way. Like if you know yourself, and if 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 they if what they are telling you is you think you know is not right, and I, 
you need to be able to say no to to those things and i and it, it can be hard you know it can be very challenging when you're young like i started more than when i was 12 right and i didn't know myself at all and that and i think when i suffered from my eating disorder that was because i was not confident in myself i didn't know who i was so i wanted to make them happy you know i wanted to follow by following their advice i thought i i could make them happy but then i lost myself i made myself unhappy so knowing yourself who you are and what you want to achieve in the in the field is so important and yeah i think it's not just about modeling but like really for everyone really knowing yourself is so important and i think we are here to discover ourselves a lot of times as well so i don't know yeah that's All right. Be so be true to yourself. Well, yeah. discover yourself and stick to your values. Yeah. Even even if it means like letting some opportunities pass you by. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Yeah. Okay. And uh, is there anything you can share about things that worked well for you uh, when you wanted to live abroad, whether it was in Canada or more recently in Paris, and and things that you on. Uh, thinking back should have been avoided um no i um i don't regret anything really um and also i don't know like when i'm technically at home right i guess because i'm back in japan um, mm -hmm. i mean for i don't know how long this lasts so i, I can't say how for how long but and first of all, I didn't plan to come come here because of because of the situation. I had to kind of yeah, I, I wanted to come back here to stay safe with my family and healthy. So I'm very grateful to to be able to, to be able to yeah to have this environment and the fact that I could come back here and yeah and but um I think the abroad living abroad I don't really regret anything and I also don't uh. I think everything I experienced was meant to. What I was trying to say, like everything I experienced, was what I needed <laughs> um, to become the person who I am today. And mm -hmm. also, um, I'm technically at home, but I don't. I feel that home is in me. That makes sense. That's great. So I don't feel like. Um, I'm in Japan, so I'm at home, if that makes sense. Yeah, I, makes I can sense. be in Paris yeah. and I feel at home. And I can be in Thailand and I can be at home. I, I can feel like I'm at home. Or like somebody that you love can make you feel at home sometimes. So yeah, my, I love my family, so they make me feel at home. So I don't think like home, the definition is, I guess, a place. But I don't think, for me, it's the people. And yeah, so... I don't know. I think um, I think I see the world as one. <laughs> that makes sense, not just like Japan and you know Paris. So yeah, yeah. I don't know if sure, it makes a lot of sense to me, <laughs> and uh, it's it's great that you're having those insights already after so few years of of traveling. Right? Some people yeah. traveling way longer and have still quite a let's say. Kind of challenge really, challenge yeah. Yeah. state of mind regarding like where do they feel like home etc right yeah. um that's great and uh is there anything you can share about your journey into veganism like maybe whether it's advices regarding foods or 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 documentaries you've watched or resources about like you you trained uh like nutrition officially but for people who don't want to go that far and still want to be mastering their own food, right, their own nutrition, uh, apart from going to your website and asking for your help officially, is there a few things you can share with us right now that could help people make one step further towards a, a, a plant-based diet? I mean, I think you already know about like the documentaries, you know, um, Cowspiracy is great for, um, this is not for nutrition really, but um, ethics more like, and uh, just, I think it's very important to make a connection why you're doing this. I think, yeah, you, it can be just for your diet, but I think ethics are very important, you know, mm -hmm. um, regarding the vegan lifestyle. 
And then what the health is, of course, great. Um, it talks a lot about um, yeah, nutrition in the uh, promised um, in promised um, lifestyle. And have you watched it? Yeah, yeah, I've, yeah, I've watched pretty much everything out there that I could find. Yeah, yeah. and also uh, Starch Solution. I okay. think it's a book, book, it's a book and yeah. also China study. Mm -hmm. And those are great books. Um, I don't know. I feel like I, I'm like really like I have find peace in this lifestyle that I'm like not sticking to because when I first went vegan, of course, I was like craving to to consume more and more information mm -hmm. about the diet. But I feel like I'm like now really focusing on like ethical fashion more. Yeah, so, true. But I yeah, like those books are great. And also I try to um, listen, well, watch videos uh, provided by like plant based doctors and I mm -hmm. also try to keep in touch with um, my uh, friend living in um, Netherlands um, he's a doctor as well plant based doctor and we just share some you know tips and because he's trying to uh, heal their uh, heal uh, patients in the Netherlands uh, by adapting plant based lifestyle uh, all right that's great like uh, heart disease and all the stuff mm. and diabetes awesome and, I think what he's doing is really great and I think it would be amazing in the future if I could work as a health coach and to support his project or his, his company and uh, yeah, that's uh, that's definitely a possibility and um, yeah, um, listen to uh, what experts say and you know, not like washed by the information that comes mm. from Instagram or yeah. Definitely. You know, social media sometimes it's it's hard and also TV I'm sorry but like I don't like Japanese TV because um, what they say is so not true I, I'm sorry but don't watch too much TV I don't think it, it doesn't it's a matter of if it's Japan or not I think TV just watching TV in general you know even about like coronavirus and stuff like that it's just they they always exaggerate um, things so I don't think it's it's a the best way source, to yeah yeah yeah, yeah exactly. definitely tv programs also have to fight for your attention and mm. so they tend to make the news and every piece of information they're providing um more sensational than it could be or should be and they also have less time when they have interviews of people usually it's very short so when you want to have information going directly to the experts themselves and then trying to see what they have to say in more than two minutes on a, a talk show or something, it's, it's definitely smarter than just uh, stopping at the television set. Yeah. yeah. Um, is there anything that I should have asked you that I didn't? Um, that you want to share? I don't think so. No. All right. So I have a few short questions for you that don't need to be longer than just a few words for the answer. Um, are you ready? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, favorite vegan food, whether you were making it oh or you're God. eating out. Oh, that's hard. <laughs> ha Let's say brownies. <laughs> brownies, all right. Because uh, I can make good brownies. Yeah, I share recipes on my website sometimes, you know, health coaching website okay. for free. So. Nice. Uh, favorite vegan restaurant or cafe in Paris? You can name up to three if you want, but you can okay. have only one if you want to. First in Paris and then in Tokyo, if you know any in Tokyo right now. Oh, my God, that's really hard as well. Uh, so, a bit, um, so... Just give me a second. Le Follet, I think it's called. Um, it's a restaurant. And La Forêt? La Follet, pardon. Okay. Uh, La Follet, because uh, they have really amazing um, vegan salad. But it's not just about boring salad. You know, they have like vegan cheese, different kinds of vegan cheese, blue cheese. And it's so, so like French and, you know, but like vegan version, you know. And they have like figs, dry figs. And also, yeah, nu very nutritious, but like not boring that makes sense and it, it it's got like nuts and seeds and and um and also they have a yeah again like a vegan like a cheese plate you know mm -hmm. and uh they have some amazing vegan meat as well and i quite like it there and uh it's close to the a beautiful park called uh Bouchemont. 
and I really like going to the park first and then going to the restaurant. All right, and sounds then, good. Yeah, next maybe uh, teas. Pardon, sepatis. Um, I was, that okay, was in okay, French. It's, it's That's uh, fine. It's, uh, uh, <laughs> well, I mean, you can you can keep on with Paris, but you gave a lot of details about that one in in like the number one La, La Forêt. So if you want to go directly to Tokyo, that's fine. Chinese place, I don't remember. Um, Tingyang, I think Tingyang. It's called Tingyang. It's in it's close to the public. Uh, it's a Chinese restaurant or Asian restaurant, and they have amazing yeah amazing vegan. Asian food. Uh, I think it's they're always busy, so just be careful. Like you, you know, it's better to be there uh, before they open. I think because <laughs> there's always a long queue. Yeah. All right. And another one could it be just actually a. Uh, sorry, I'm gonna say maybe um, aujourd'hui demain. Aujourd'hui demain. So it's today and tomorrow. Aujourd'hui demain. Ah, aujourd'hui demain. Okay. So it's like today and tomorrow. All right. Uh, this is a cafe, but also a concept store. So you can also find ethical and vegan uh, fashion, and you can also shop there. So, like you can, I mean, it's a grocery store as well. So you can, you know, get your groceries, but then you can also have a coffee, and they have amazing food as well. So, um, yeah, I love Ojojima. Yeah, it's all right, great. I think Ojojima could be my favorite. I'm sorry. <laughs> no I, I, I think I'm Let's back say... in Japan, so I forgot about those places. But I... uh, no worries. Wow. Um, it's just some ideas for people who listen and live in Paris or or would probably check just out swing my, by Paris. Yes, please check out my YouTube video uh, on my YouTube channel called Ki uh, Kiko Sunflower Soul. So because I have a top 10. Uh, restaurants and cafes in Paris. I made a video about it. Okay. So yeah, you can always check them out. I know that people like the video, so that's good. Yeah. Um, how about Tokyo? Do you have any? It could be only one. Do you have one preferred place when you want to eat out in? So in Tokyo? it's been only like over one week, but I yeah. went to uh, Sando Saido. Yes, Saido, uh, Saido, Saido in uh, Jiugaoka. Yes. Oh, it's amazing. I had unagi, you know, eel, yeah. vegan yeah, eel yeah, yeah. donburi. Yeah. Oh. Very amazing. Yeah, it's it's very nice. Um, I never thought I would be able to have vegan you. Yeah, so it was very nice. And I think I, ha yeah, stuff is very um friendly as well. So. Yeah. And I also had like a vegan blueberry cheesecake. Mm -hmm. It was in a pot, like okay. a small pot. It was like it looked like a plant. Okay. I don't know if you know what. What I'm talking about. I didn't get that. When I went there, okay. it was always for a vegan meetup event. Cute, yeah. uh, and so sure. I didn't order uh, from the menu, actually. But So it was a buffet thing when I went. Yeah, so yeah, it was yeah. different. No, it's very nice. Yeah. All right. Um, either in English, in French, or in Japanese, mm. your favorite word. Oh my God. <laughs> That's love. Love. Okay. Yeah. Good. Or self love. Self love? Yeah. Sure. I say this all the time. <laughs> so, all right. Yeah. Very important. Um, the three things you can't do without during one day, if you have to choose three things you can't do without for one day, what would those be? Um, it can be a habit. Yoga, it, go maybe. Ahead. Let's mm -hmm. say, um, also I do skip <laughs> sometimes on week. Weekends. Yeah, it doesn't have to be a hundred percent, but, but if I, you have if to I, think, yeah, yeah, I do need yoga in my life. Yeah, yoga and um, water <laughs> and <laughs> and um, yeah, people like my people. Yeah, yeah very important. Sure. Uh, so, where can people go to get in touch with you uh, if they want to ask you something or just uh, look at your profiles, for example? Yeah, please visit my Instagram uh, page. It's um, Kiko. Dot, sorry, it's not dot. Juan, how is it? As in <laughs> it's dot in is English. It, yeah. Is it dot? Yeah, it is. Oh, yeah, dot. Sorry. It's the same as I in Japanese, Juan. right? <laughs> uh, yeah. So, Kiko. Dot, uh, sunflower soul. Um, yeah, so please visit the page there. And if you want to follow me on YouTube, you can do that as well, uh, which is the same, actually. Mm -hmm. It's just Kiko Sunflower. So you can just type Kiko Sunflower. So, um, yeah, but I'm more active on, uh, on Instagram, definitely. So, yeah. 
All right. Uh, well, Kiko, thank you very much for taking the time to be here on the podcast. And it was a real pleasure talking with you and listening about your story. Yeah. Uh, I hope the time you will spend in Japan will well not be too long because that would mean the situation doesn't get better that mm. soon. But on the other hand, I hope you have a great time with family and that you are able to enjoy some of the things that Japan can provide that yes, Paris doesn't. Sure. And uh, yeah, until next time. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks. Thank bye. you. Bye bye. Thank you for listening to the Ciplango podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please think about sharing it with friends and on social media. Ciplango is also on Instagram and Facebook at C-I-P-L-A-N-T-G-O. There you can have a look at the latest things going on in my plan-based life in Japan. There is also an email address, ciplango at gmail.com. Feel free to send me a message, whether it's to ask a question, give me suggestions for Ciplango, or anything else. Have a great rest of the day, and until next time.